Welcome to the Portal Report interview series. I'm your host, George Michalowski, Director of Recruiting with the Portal Report. And today I'm joined by a very special guest. I welcome in Jay Billis. Um, Jay, obviously a household name in college hoops. He's on top of the college hoops world, uh, having worked at ESPN for more than the last 27 years as its college basketball analyst. Uh, the two-time national champion assistant coach with Duke, four-year starter with the Blue Devils. So um, the accolades go on. Uh, it's an honor to be able to, to catch up with Jay and talk some hoops today. So uh, welcome on, Jay. Thanks for, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, George. Good to be with you. Of course. So, you know, I heard you the other day on, on the Rich Eisen show saying uh, at some point in the near future, um, you know, talking about the, the transfer portal here, and NIL um, schools are going to have to be signing these players just to contracts. You know, you always talk about how amateurism is dead. That's your phrase. And uh, the only thing missing here is the NCAA realizing that this is just business, these deals with players, these deals with transfers and, and just prospects in general. So uh, it's, it's essentially, like you say, the same way business is done with the coaches who are already making millions on contract. So uh, my question to you uh, to start off is, if you were in charge of the NCAA right now, uh, what would your first move be, you know, in regards to fixing this mess, the uncertainty that the NCAA has created with, with NIL? Well, the only uncertainty they've created is they, they've tried to draw a different line in the sand rather than drawing at the amateurism level, which the Supreme Court basically eviscerated nine to nothing. Uh, the NCAA came out with this new sort of movement of the goalpost that, that now uh, players can't be employees so that, that you can't provide money to them to um, come to a school or to stay at a school. That's where they're drawing the line. They don't want it to be in recruiting, uh, but it is already in recruiting and it was ludicrous to think that it wouldn't be. And if people think that these collectives are acting without the knowledge and involvement of the coaches of the sports that they're helping, uh, they're, they, that, that's just not true. I mean, the, the coach knows the players that they want. They know what it's going to take. They talk with the collective and the collective does the, the legwork. It's really not that difficult. And, right. and it's, really no, it's really no different than uh, a school offering a player a scholarship and a stipend. So some, some athletes don't get a scholarship. Some get a partial scholarship. Some are walk-ons. You know, it's really not that difficult. And uh, they just ought to deregulate and, uh, and let these schools do business because clearly these schools want to pay the players because they essentially are. Right. And they're just doing it behind these, these doors that are soon to be broken down. And, and one of the guys that, that comes to mind when we're talking about coaches handling what's going on is Jay Wright, um, obviously. So after this season, when we see Jay retire, um, which I think to most fans was pretty shocking, I know some close to the situation that, that knew Jay better uh, weren't all that surprised. Um, but in that situation, you know, everyone's bringing up the changing landscape in college basketball. Uh, you know, was that a potential reason for him retiring? Uh, but then on the other hand, you see guys like Mike Bray this week say, you know, hey, shut up. Like, let's adjust. Let's let's adjust to the times. Let's let's adapt to what's going on behind the scenes here. And let's bring it to light, like you're saying. So. Um, you know, overall, what have you heard and seen around the game, you know, relating to this in the past few years, um, you know, with the rise of the, the portal and NIL, are, are the more experienced coaches fed up with the current state of everything? Or, or do they not want to deal with recruiting the portal and recruiting with NIL, you know, going through boosters and collectives? Well, I think there are a lot of generalizations that go along with answering the question. I think generally, not, not everybody, but generally, the older you are, the less you like to deal with change in your job. And, uh, and as, as older coaches get toward the end of their careers, uh, they do complain more about the way things are relative to the way they used to be. But none of them complained when their salary is shot through the roof and said, hey, this is wrong, or I don't like this, or boy, this is really different having to deal with all these tax situations. You know, they never they didn't complain about that. And I think if, and look, Jay Wright aside, if any, any coach toward the end of their career wishes to retire or step away over this, um, I'm sorry, uh, but, but that's, not, that's not any reason for this to, to change or not change. Um, that's just not good enough. Uh, this is a multi-billion dollar business. And any coach right now, I can, I can promise you this, any coach now that is in a position to retire over this or any other reason, has made a ton of money over the last 30, 40 years. 
And that's why they can retire. If things stayed the same as they were 40 years ago, when I first got to college, none of these coaches would be able to afford to retire. And that's sort of the rub here is, you know, I heard Bob Bowlesby recently, and I, I like Bob very much, respect him a, a ton, but he, he's retiring as the Big 12 commissioner and, and made a statement the other day that he feels like Andy, Andy Dufresne and the Shawshank Redemption, you know, crawling through that, that river of, of uh you know waste in order to escape the the prison and part of you like look I, I didn't i didn't hear him say it so you know maybe he was joking and trying to get a big laugh but part of me was like really you really like you've made 20 30 million dollars in this industry over the last 10 12 years right. and and you want to analogize yourself to a prisoner escaping a, a federal prison like come on man you know, it's that kind of it's that kind of thing when there's the slightest bit of change with regard to an athlete that everybody has their hair on fire. But we didn't hear the same kind of criticism uh, back in 1984 when the schools sued the NCAA and won so they could be on TV anytime they wanted and cut their own media rights deals. That's when college sports really changed. And uh, and I don't hear any of the old timers complaining about that. You know, that's when it became a multi-billion dollar entertainment industry. But now that the players can realize a little bit of value, you know, now we got to put the brakes on and, you know, woe is me and I'm leaving. I, I don't, well, first of all, you know, I'm not laying this on any one coach because right. I don't think, I don't think Jay Wright quit because of this. Um, but uh, who knows, maybe it was a factor. I don't know. But, but if anybody does quit over this, they've had a pretty good run and it's time for the next generation to adapt and to deal with what what the the prior regime built this into because it just didn't you know wind up this way it was purposefully and intentionally built into this that's right and and some of those guys that that may have already adapted some of those guys that are the younger generation of coaches that are accepting this and and adapting to it like we said you know you talk about Nate Oates Eric Musselman uh, those guys in the SEC just two examples but um, some coaches and staffs like that have, have been reaching out to a high number uh, of the transfers in the portal. And, and it's been reported that some of these schools are reaching out to tons of these guys just to hide who they're really going after. Um, so th they're coming up with different strategies to recruit this portal and to, to use everything that's, that's going on in the portal. But um, there's, there's also on the other hand, guys who uh, coaches and staffs who are really selective in the transfer portal with, with who they're recruiting, with how they're using NIL, with how they're going about all this. Um, but um, if I had to ask you right now, you know, which coach or staff has caught your eye so far with his strategy um, dealing with not only the portal, but also NIL um, and, and, and just his success with, with recruiting this portal? Well, I don't know who's, uh, you know, who's doing anything with regard to NIL because those are more private matters. And I'm not sure any of us should know that that should be between the athlete and school. Right. Uh, similar, similar to, you know, you don't you don't know all the goings on with uh, with the coaching staff uh, recruiting a, an assistant coach off another staff that happens too now. And nobody nobody says that's tampering or, uh, you know, they're poaching. Uh, that's just called business. And it happens all the time. Uh, so, you know, I can't give you a list of coaches that I think are doing a good job at the portal. Uh, you know, everybody has to every coach and staff has to make a decision about how they're going to put their roster together. And this decision is going to be year by year. You're not going to be able to do it in my judgment, just by high school players. And you're probably going to have a difficult time doing it just through the portal. It's going to have to be a combination of things, but it's, it's delicate and you're going to have to make good decisions with regard to talent level and also uh, the kind of person you want to bring into your organization. Right. And, and, and out of those guys, you know, there's over 1500 players in the portal still. I mean, it's just a high number. And and, you know, with that uh, being said, you know, all these guys ranging from, like you said earlier, walk ons to, you know, conference players of the year to NBA draft prospects. There's a whole pool of talent. here. It's um, it's changing the whole, whole landscape of recruiting. Um, so last question here, I, I just want to find out. Um, you know, we've had Kendrick Davis to Memphis. People are saying uh, that's, you know, the biggest commitment so far from the portal. Baylor Shireman to Creighton, Terrence Shannon to Illinois. There's tons of these big names using this transfer portal to, to find a new home across the country. Um, you know, which commitment or commitments, if there's a few that stand out um, from the portal, do you think will have the biggest impact on their new teams next season? 
you know, it's hard to say you named a few, but what, what I'm really stuck with is the number of players that go into the portal uh, that, you know, people, people complain about, but what it indicates is there are a lot of players out there that are interested in something different. And, and years past when there was a transfer penalty you had to sit out a year, what, what did that indicate? That indicate that, that, that players just wanted, um, you know, it's not that they wanted to go through adversity like a lot of coaches talk about. It's, it's they made a decision. They, I'm not willing to sit out a year of my life, uh, so I'll stay in a situation that's not ideal for me. But now they can go out and find what they may feel is ideal or better. And one of the things I find really interesting is it seems like every coach and staff have made a decision that if you go, if one of the players goes into the portal, don't think you can come back. We're not taking right. you back. Right. And so they don't want them to leave, but then they refuse to take them back and then complain that they don't have a landing spot. Some of them. And, uh, and I don't understand that if, if we're talking about, you know, player, you know, putting the players first and all that business, which everybody talks about then why wouldn't if a player puts his, his or her name in the portal and they don't find something better and they would like to come back, why wouldn't you welcome them back? That, that I don't understand. And, and maybe that's something that'll change in the future that coaches realize that, hey, if somebody puts their name in the portal and I, can, I should still recruit them and maybe, maybe they'll come back if they don't find something better. And uh, that may be a good way to, to manage your roster as well is, uh, is start welcoming them back instead of this thing like, this iron fist is there. If you put your name in the portal, you're not coming back here. That kind of thing. That makes no sense to me. Right. It's going on in football too. You know, the whole Jordan Addison thing uh, with, with Pittsburgh, um, you know, as soon as those rumors start flying around the pit coaches, the pit, you know, players start kind of commenting, it gains traction. And then he officially enters the portal. And it's almost like the feeling around the program is they don't want him back at this point. They're, they're kind of rallying together with, with not feeling wanted themselves um, which is which is one thing that's justified but then some players did come out like you said and they were like hey we'll take him back as, as he can walk right back into this locker room like he did any other day before you know he's just testing his options he's you know finding out his worth and and seeing what else is on the table for him so um, it, it's it's definitely changed there's a whole new meaning to managing a roster like you the, the term you brought up so um, that that's all we've got today I'm on the Portal Report interview series. Uh, I want to thank Jay so much for coming on the show. I uh, really appreciate all the work you do for, for ESPN and, and the college basketball world. So check out Jay's work at, uh, at Jay Billis for college basketball insight and some Jeezy lyrics every day. Um, so thank you again, Jay, for coming on. And, and that's the show.